what is the direction of the current in the external circuit right either x to y or y to x so let's go ahead and take a look we have a generator in front of us it's here in the equation statement so with the generator we use the right hand rule and then with the motor we use the left hand rule so let's go ahead and apply the right hand rule on this generator and see whether the direction of the current is going to be x to y or y to x so let's take a look we are placing our hand right here on this part of our coil so it's your right hand your thumb your index and your middle finger are at right angles to each other right and then with your index finger you point from north to south and then now comes the direction of your thumb your thumb has to follow the force of the direction in which the coil is moving the coil is moving clockwise as you can clearly see here from our sketch so this part uh, that you're interested on is going to be moving upwards if the coil is moving clockwise so there we go that is going to be the direction of the thumb so if you place your index from north to south and your thumb is pointing upwards then your middle finger is going to point in that direction so that is the direction of the current so take a look at how the current flows it flows in this manner and as you can see when we get to our external circuit it is flowing from y to x so the answer to 9.1 we have y to x and then 9.2 say the energy conversion that takes place in this generator so in a generator we convert mechanical energy to electrical energy we have mechanical to electrical energy right that is 9.2 and then in 9.3 the maximum voltage produced by the generator is 125 volts and then the first question determine the term root mean square voltage well this is a definition that most people get wrong right uh, because it is often overlooked people they don't really practice this definition so i wonder if you actually know this definition can you just state it for me in the comment section just put in the keywords there i want to see something a lot of people think that they know these definitions but they don't so that is 9.3 9.4 calculate the rule mean square voltage of this generator so we are looking for vrms we know that it is v max divided by square root of two i think we all get this one and then if we substitute v max one two five divided by square root of two so let me take a look one two five divided by square root of two i'm getting 88.39 volts so that is the root mean square voltage while on the other hand 9.5 the total resistance is said to be 42.4 ohms in the external circuit the question calculate the maximum current induced so if we want to find the maximum current uh, we know that i is equals to v over r but i max itself the maximum current will be v max divided by square root of 2 so let's take a look do we have v max yes we do 125 and then not square root of two here yeah, make a mistake the resistance what's happening divided by the resistance not square root of two the resistance is 42.4 so 125 divided by 42.4 uh, this is 2.95 ampere and there we go that is our maximum current induced 9.6 the last question oh well this is not that long 9.6 the generator induced the current at a frequency of 20 hertz so we have f being equal to 20 hertz 
the coil started rotating from the initial position okay as shown in the diagram above sketch a graph of induced current versus time for two complete rotations of the coil okay let's see induced current versus time what are we supposed to indicate we're supposed to indicate the time taken for the two rotations and the maximum current induced by the generator okay so the position that we have on the sketch is that going to give us a, a current of zero on the initial position or the maximum current at t is equals to zero uh, that is what we need to figure out first so here we have current in ampere so this position that we have in our sketch is where we have our maximum current so it means that our graph should start from up here that's where our graph will start because the position in the sketch gives us the maximum current so we need two complete rotations so well i'm not studying off uh, in a manner that i like there so this is one complete wavelength and i will have to extend my line here so let me erase this and extend my line ah uh, well i can draw the line after it's fine but that is one complete rotation and then now we have the second one so let me just put that line there and see if what i'm saying is correct so from here to here it's one wavelength then from here to here it's another wavelength okay what i'm doing is correct so there we go we have our two rotations uh, this is the time in seconds we need to indicate a couple of things time taken for the two rotations and the maximum current let's start with the maximum current 2.95 now let's come to the time we're given the frequency which is 20 hertz but we know that with the frequency we can find the period so what is 1 over 20 1 over 20 is equals to 0 0.05 so the time taken to complete uh the two rotations will be 0 0.05 multiplied by 2 because the period is for one complete cycle so if you multiply by 2 we get 0 0.1 so here we have 0 0.05 and there we have 0 0.1 so there we go that is question 9 electrodynamics